we've all lost our, our sensory abilities, haven't we? I mean, you know this, all musicians know this. You, 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 if, when you're playing live, you play differently to if you are in a studio or if you're in your own home. Um, why? Because audience and performers feed off each other and indeed help each other up to better things. You know, the, the the audience wills the performer on to do well. Yeah, you know they want you to to succeed. And I know a lot of performers in a lot of different genres who 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 say that that's 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 how that's when ideas come to them. That you don't even register them as ideas at the time, but that the audience helps you to do certain things. It's the same in sports. I mean, you hear this all the time from football players and others that they couldn't have done it without the crowd. And it's a similar thing, and that the, the, the crowd willing them on makes them do things they didn't know they could do without that support. Um, we've all lost that in every single realm. Uh, I most, uh, I, I always travel a lot for my work as a writer, and um, most weeks I would be speaking somewhere. And, uh, you know, uh, m m one of the joys of that for me is questions, answers, and then interactions with audiences afterwards, because that's when people say, well, you know, you said this, but I, I, what, what, you know, when you said this and then you said that, what did you mean by, uh, and that's when you're thinking, you know, that's when you're really involving yourself. And it's one of the best things. It's the bit I enjoy the most. I, I've lost that just, as all these other people in every other realm have lost that. We've all lost our antennae of knowing how other people are thinking and their instincts. And I think there's a lot of things that's happened in recent months that wouldn't have happened as frenetically if it weren't for the fact we've all been basically in solitude. And, and it's, you know, an enormous amount can be done by Zoom, but there are things you can't do. You can't sense those very specific public moments. I was speaking to a journalist recently about this, about live audiences on political debate shows, for instance. Um, uh, if you did a show like Question Time, uh, there was always a moment where you could slip into, I know this from my own experience, you could, the panel could slip into sort of all saying sort of the same thing. Because you, you sort of do have a strange pact to sort of all help each other to do well in a way, even opponents. You don't want silence, for instance. There can't be silence in the studio. That would be disaster for everyone. And um, there's always a moment when you can feel that there's something that isn't being said, and you have to hope that it's the thing you're about to say, of course, but, um, and you say it, and the audience, sometimes they erupt in disapproval. Very often it's those, moments when you can just feel something's not right and that the several hundred people in the room aren't with the panel and it's and you need to say the thing and sometimes as the outsider the journalist or the writer you say the thing and then it gets this sort of and, and you think yes that was what needed to be said now you can't get that with a sort of five people sitting in a studio with no audience you don't get that no no way and we've all, as I say, we've all lost that. And so, and, and, and one thing that seems to me has done has been to make us all do group think a bit more, you know, be a bit more easily um, guided. I, I mean that in the literal, you know, to be sort of pushed into agreeing to things. If we'd been having this conversation last year and you'd said to me, uh, by the way, Douglas, in, in 2020, I think that people are going to be chucked out of pubs at 10 o'clock and told to go back to their homes. Or we'll have no booze in the pubs, as is we'll just no booze. In, in Scotland. Or, See, I mean, or, or in restaurants. I, I, the idea, I mean, I'm half Scots, so I can say this, but I mean, the <laughs> idea that if you'd have said to me last year, Doug, they're going to they're make, they're going to stop selling booze in the boozers of Scotland in 2020. I said, what weird dystopian... Huxleyan book are you reading that's made you think that? You know, but this, the, all of this is possible because we've not been congregating, we've not been gathering. Uh, LA restaurants, just yesterday, the authorities in LA said that 
Don't forget to put your mask on between bites. What? Yes. So you, t you take a bite of your food, you put your mask back on, you chew, and then you're allowed to take it off again. Can you imagine? How do you do that? What, what, what like weird S&M matron stands over you and tells you to reattach your bib? Is that in a, re in, in a restaurant you're paying for? Is that actually, I'm going to, I'm yeah. so went out yesterday. by that. Cause, yeah, cause went out we, yesterday. We were honestly, you know, I've been joking with friends and, and family and, and people, you know, whenever I've been in a restaurant since lockdown restrictions eased, we were joking about that as if, you know, how absurd would that be if, if the masks, you know, had to be on at the table? It just wouldn't work. And now that's... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was a logical next step or the illogical next step because, I mean, here in the US, uh, if you... If you walk to your table from the bathroom or whatever, you have, to, you have to wear your mask between the table and the place. Now, in, in Britain, you put your mask on, you take your mask off when you go into a restaurant. You have your mask off for the rest of the evening. But if, if you believe that those seconds when you pass other tables could be contaminating uh, and so on, then I suppose the obvious next step is to say, and also, you know, keep... But... What's the point in going to the restaurant then? Well, I mean, I know. I mean, I would, I would, I would rather eat my own cooking, and that, this is saying something. Um, and uh, but yes, I mean, all of this is, is stuff I think we've been falling into partly because we've just not been gathering and we've not been able to get together with large groups of people, large groups of friends. Saying that doesn't seem quite on.